ladies and guys who want to manifest more money into their life. Andy here, author of the best Tinder guide on the internet. This is the Kill Your Inner Loser show. Let's fucking go. This is an interview, which I am so crazy excited to share with you guys. It's an interview with Paige, who is an absolutely legendary human being. She's a stripper, a coach, a mentor, an author, absolute badass of a human being. She, uh, Basically, she's still stripping. She runs her own coaching program as well, teaching other people how to make more money, uh, partly from stripping, but also just in general, like any kind of coaching program, whatever. She is an absolute legend. I watched an interview that she did with another woman that I follow, Haley, and this interview was directly responsible. This interview I watched was directly responsible for me making more money, putting my prices up. So I sat down with her. I gushed like a little schoolgirl. I was absolutely a, a complete fangirl for her. I love her to pieces. I think you guys are going to love this interview. We talked about money, how much money she's making. We answered some of your questions about stripping, what that's like. We talked about how to build a life of abundance. And a lot of the concepts that she talks about are absolutely just like exactly the same as the stuff that we talk about. She even uses some of the same language, like abundance mentality, you know, manifesting what you want, all that kind of stuff. So you guys are going to love this interview. You can tell I'm crazy excited. I really love sitting down with her. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Enjoy. But I actually got to, I got to be honest with you. I got a fangirl over you. Like I have to, I have to be your fangirl. Cause like I saw it several months ago that you went on Haley's YouTube, like Haley from your guy to love. And you were talking about like, your relationship with money and stuff. You said several things in there that like legitimately just messed with my head. And I was like, oh my God, everything she's saying is correct. I should know all this stuff, but for some reason I hadn't applied it to me. Like there was one quote that you said that was like, there are no rules about how much you're allowed to earn other than the ones you self improved And the second you said that, I was like, I need to put my prices up. Like immediate, I immediately went and like doubled all my prices for my coaching. And I was like, no, she's right. And the rest of the, in I've listened to that interview so many times. You have no idea. You legitimately changed my life. So I really freaking appreciate you coming on. I was like, you have no idea. Like, and my girlfriend was so excited, like for you to come on and stuff, because like, that was just. Oh my God. I love it. Well, I'm happy that landed and I'm also happy you took action on it and did something yeah. about it. That is like yeah. a big part of my content is like taking action. Like, don't just sit there. If you hear something and you want to implement it, like go, 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 go. But mm -hmm. oh my God. yeah, I'm, I'm really, I don't, I'm gushing. I'm like really happy that you came on because like legitimately oh, the <laughs> last six months, here. the last six months has just been like every single time I have one of those stupid limiting beliefs, I would just think like, but what did Paige say? But what did pa Paige oh. said? Like th that's a crap rule that you've just invented. And then I'm like, yeah, no, that there's no rules. And like, I'm figuring out, and I'm sure you already know, there are no rules with money. Like. Zero. Only and, the self-imposed limitations that you choose to accept is your truth. Yeah. Because here's like the worst one that came up for me and that comes up for everyone. We're in a pandemic. And you even yeah. said on that podcast, you're like, that, so what does that have to do with anything? I'm making more money than I ever have in my life. Like, why would a pandemic okay. stop you from making money? But like, or like, I'm not allowed to have enough money. Like that was another one that came up. Yeah. Why would you not be allowed to? Yeah. When did you so, decide that? That I'm not allowed to have money? Yeah. I don't know. That's the creepy thing. I don't know why that rule is there. And I, I, yeah. I agree with you that I put that rule there. But why? And when? Yeah. P probably in my childhood. Like maybe, yeah. honestly, maybe that. When I saw other kids in school buying lunch from the cafeteria and they could buy whatever they wanted but i had to eat like sandwiches that my mom had and god bless my mom her cooking was great but like i'm not allowed to have that cool food that everyone else has had so therefore we can't have money or if, if like i had to use old clothes or something because we we had enough money but we didn't have like a ton of money and so that kind of just sticks with you you're like i'm not allowed to have money that's the thing is everything it sticks with you when we're age zero to seven we're walking subconscious minds that's our imprint stage right so everything yeah. that we see hear, and experience about money about life about anything we take it on to be our truth and then we grow up and we're old adults grown adults and then we're like you know abiding by these rules that you know weren't even ours our parents or our siblings or grandparents or whatever and it's like wait a second that's not true for me. <laughs> and that applies to everything. That's not even just money. I'm, you already know this, but like dating relationships like that, 
like I have so many friends, even my girlfriend, she went through this like process herself, wh who've been through divorces. And so then you have this template of, oh, that means all relationships are messy. They will always end. They always have to end in misery. And then at some point you say like, is that even true? Or did I just invent that? And again, like I said, my girlfriend has gone through that. And she's gone through this process over the last three years of saying like, this relationship doesn't have to end, does it? And it's like, no, I love you. You love me. Like, why would it end? Yeah. Yeah. People are so quick, you know, women are so quick to, you know, sometimes like a guy hurts their feelings or a fuck boy comes along and they get ghosted and they're like, all men are trash. All men suck. And it's like, wait, hold on one second. Are, are they really, are all men? Do you not know one single good person, one single good man in your life? And also like, are you only looking for one? Like all you need is one. Like you don't, you need multiple unless you want multiple then you can have that but if there's one there's going to be multiple so but I, I i always love having like women on this podcast because you can just flip that and i can give you the exact opposite of that which is i have so many like male clients who will do the same thing they will say like you know this woman ghosted me so all women are just there to waste your time they're all just time wasters they're all just going to break your heart and you go like really or are you just looking for that are you inventing that like we have one i have one guy who's in like my group coaching program and he has been working on his template for relationships because he in his head believes he doesn't deserve love and women don't really want to stick around with you they kind of they'll just have sex with you. it's almost like he thinks women are fuck boys fuck girls like like the, the female equivalent of a fuck boy so they'll, they'll have sex with you a couple of times and then they don't really want to hang around with you and so He's been subconsciously pushing them away because he believes, well, why they don't want to stay. Like, why would they stay? So he's doing everything to push them away. And I know you talked about this a lot in your content. If you believe, like you get what you subconsciously believe. Yes. The, like law of attraction, the universe, whatever you want to call it, like all that kind of good spiritual hippie. I love that shit, by the way. We'll talk <laughs> about that in a little bit. But like, if you believe that women aren't going to stick around, they won't. Because the good ones will pick up on that. Like when I say the good ones, the ones who want to stick around will pick up on that and go like, this guy has some weird, like, I don't know, he's trying to push me away or something. Like, why would I stay? I'm going to go find some guy that wants me to stick around. Yeah. And all you're left with is the people that will, will leave or you just yeah. push them away. Totally. If you have deep rooted subconscious beliefs, see if your subconscious mind and your conscious mind are in conflict, your subconscious yeah. is always going to win. So while consciously this client of yours is saying, I want a girlfriend, I want a relationship, I want this. Subconsciously, he doesn't believe that it's safe for him to have that because he subconsciously believes everyone goes away, everyone goes away, people don't really mm -hmm. want that. So it's getting to the root cause of that and working on his self-worth and his validation and I am good enough, right? Yes. And not putting the external validation and if this girl calls me back or not, I'm still good enough regardless. Yes. That that's where the energy shift happens. I love what you said there about the subconscious mind will win. The subconscious mind is a bitch. It will always figure out a way to beat the conscious. It It'll, it, <laughs> I mean, yes, yes. I've, I talk about that a lot with my guys where they'll have some um, like habit or behavior like, like what we're talking about here. And they'll get frustrated by it. Like this guy in particular, he'll say like, why am I always like pushing women away? And I will say, you, you need to learn to be grateful for that because it did serve a purpose. It was protecting you. It stopped you from getting hurt like your parents had a divorce or whatever. But now you need to ask yourself, like, is it time to let that go? So I guess we should make that clear. Yeah, sure. The subconscious mind is trying to look out for you. It's just a lot more like childlike in how it does it sometimes. And it doesn't always get it right in the moment, if you know what I mean. <laughs> right. Well, right to our ego, right? Or right to our conscious mind. Because while, of course, we are attracted to this, this you know, in your, your client's case, to this woman, right? Mm -hmm. But she ultimately wasn't the right person for him. And so she goes away, then it was, she was meant to go away. And even though in the moment it hurts, like, we want to get that job or that raise or make that money or, you know, ha have that partner. And if they don't, if it, that doesn't work for us in the moment, we think, why is this happening to me? versus switching it to, okay, this is happening for me. What's there to learn here? And thank you, what's next? You are absolutely speaking my language. I love, I, I, I hinted at it before. I love this kind of like, take this as a good thing, it's a compliment. This kind of like hippie stuff, because like, this is just exactly the way I talk and stuff. I have, I've done podcasts on like, you know, you get what you subconsciously believe and like law of attraction. I didn't call it law of attraction, but it's like, it's the same thing. Like as soon as you stick in your mind, either I want this or I deserve this, or I'm going to work towards this, or I'm allowed to have this, or 
may even maybe i'm allowed to have this i'm going to try for it as soon as you have that like the world opens up to you but if you if you're obsessed with this idea of nah i'm never it's never going to work out or all men are assholes as you said before you just don't get the things that you want yep exactly that is also called the law of correspondence which states that your outer reality is a direct reflection of your inner reality so what yes. you believe to be true you're projecting into your life whether you believe men suck then they're gonna suck if you believe oh my god i'm treated like a fucking queen then that's what you're going to get does it does it ever like maybe drive you crazy is not the right way of phrasing it but I mean, okay, maybe it is. Does it do where you like look at other people and it's always easier to look at someone else and see what they could be doing better versus yourself. But do you ever like look at someone else who just has these like limiting beliefs or like these subconscious desires and stuff and they're just absolutely self-sabotaging like crazy. And you just want to get in there and just like tweak one or two things and say like, just stop doing that. Just that one thing if you stop doing that. But they almost can't see it or, or they eventually see it, but it takes them like six months. And by the way, I'm the same. Like I'm horrible at, at seeing my own things. But does that ever kind of like drive you crazy? We just like, you could have the world's happiest life if you just stop doing that one thing. Like just stop, yeah. stop. Like you can't yeah, totally. Your and happiness. I mean, total, total, yeah, total reflection on myself. I mean, we all go through things. Like I have the same, uh, you know, lesson coming with a prettier bow every time to me to learn this again, learn this again, learn this again. Fuck, man. Yeah. And sometimes <laughs> but when you, I look at other people you, making decisions, like what you were talking about, other people, I'm like, they could just do that one thing. Yeah, it's like, oh my god, I want to help them. But the thing is, is if you just tell them, like, if I just tell you, hey. Andy, this is your problem, X, Y, and Z, right? You're gonna be like, yeah, yeah, whatever, this girl just said this. But if I ask you inquisitive questions yep. to lead you to find the answer yourself, that's mm -hmm. where the magic and the light bulb and the ahas happen, like in coaching containers, as you know about this, yes, yes, you know, but it's yes. getting the client listening and asking the right questions to get the client to come to that answer for themselves, which yeah, sometimes takes six months, but. <laughs> yeah, but you can it. like gently lead them I, I do love, and I know, because you do coaching as well. We'll talk about that in a little bit. You have a coaching program and stuff. I, I do like that process of leading. Like, you know exactly where it's going. You know where they're going to end up. And you get to just, like, pretend that you didn't know. You just be, like, you ask as you say questions. You'll say, like, oh, do you think that behavior is, like, helping or, or harming you? And then they'll stop and be like, you know, I guess I never thought about it. Maybe, maybe this isn't helping me. So maybe I should stop doing it. What could I do? And you just let them talk and they eventually get to the answer and they're like, I did it. And you're like, I knew you were going to get there the whole time. Like, like it's like you're 10 steps ahead and you're trying to obviously coach. You're trying to get them to that point that you're already at, that you, the answer, you know, they need or that they would benefit from. Yeah. I, I, I'm sure you do too, but I love the process of coaching. Oh, same. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Do you do your own coaching? Like, is that you that does it? So like, like do you question. do one-on-one -on -one or? Yeah, I do one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. I also have group programs, but I also have an NLP coaching certification program as well that I recently launched. So if you want to learn how to become an NLP practitioner, learn about the subconscious mind, learn how to be an exceptional coach, um, I have my Rich Method NLP coaching certification uh, just nice. launched as well. Yeah. NLP is like the the fancy way of, of talking about everything that we, for anyone listening, NLP is the fancy way of talking about everything that we're talking about here. Yeah. Yeah, the scientific, like the the proof. <laughs> it's it's Why? if you if you want to sound like yeah, like you know what you're talking about. Yeah. If you just want to sound like a like an idiot like me, you just talk about all the stuff that I talk about. Yeah. You don't sound like an idiot. <laughs> Thank you. That's very that's very polite. But you you yeah. have to say that. I'll give you that ten dollars later. Oh, honey, I don't have to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get into coaching? Because because for for context, and as as I said, I'm gonna do an intro after this, and I'll, I'll talk about like where you're at, but. You started stripping first, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And then at what yeah, point I... did you get into coaching? Yeah. So I started stripping when I was 19 years old. Mm. I'm 32 now. Um, and so for my adult life, like all my adult life, like dancing was my main source of income. And mm. over the years, I, um, you know, would try my hand at different businesses and nothing was ever successful. And then I went through some, you know, stuff as we all do. And I had like a really big drug problem mm -hmm. and i went on a trip to ireland and london like overseas first time i didn't have access to drugs i felt great and i came home and i was like i need to start an online business so i can travel and change my fucking life around and so i came home and i just started like researching like 
you know, how do you make money online? Like, well, how do I do this? And then one thing led to another and I found the coaching industry and then, you know, NLP and all of that kind of stuff. But um, that's like what led me there. Uh, and so coaching is my main source of income, but I still okay. strip too. <laughs> and I love it. Okay. So you still do it. Yeah. I thought you were still doing it because you've mentioned in a couple of podcasts and I wasn't a hundred percent sure if you were still doing it or if you were talking about it in the past, but yeah, it's obviously yeah. something you love. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I definitely had to work to okay. get to that point. Yeah. Was that just a process of like, I'm, I'm going to guess here, did you just not have boundaries at the start? Is that what made you love it more? Um. Well, yeah, I mean, when you're younger, you don't like know, and there's less, you know, yeah. you're not as sure of yourself as a 32 year old okay. woman versus a little 19 year old, you know, yeah. but also, um, you know, all of the growth that and healing and personal work that I've done through growing my business and through my coaching career, you also, you heal yourself, right? Yes. And the more you heal yourself and you understand your worth and your value, everything else just shifts in your life. And it's like, I used to think I had to be a stripper and prove myself to the world to validate, well, at least I have this. And it's like, that's not even the fucking truth. Like I could be a career stripper and still be just and am as worthy and, and as if anyone else, you know? That's fascinating. Wait, as in, so are you talking about like you didn't think you'd be respected? Well, I was, I hid the fact that I was a stripper for years and years and years and years because especially when okay. I started my coaching business, I was, I call it coming out of the stripper closet. I didn't tell yeah. anyone because I thought, they wouldn't respect me. No, no one would ever work with me. They wouldn't hire me. And my coaching business wasn't making anything. And then I started working with a coach and she knew I was a stripper. And she was like, Paige, you have to come. We call it coming out of the stripper closet. And so I came out of the stripper closet and I went from literally making zero dollars to like fucking like my business just like skyrocketed because I was nice. just being authentic and I was owning the fuck out of myself. And I allow other people to do the same. And it was like, the best decision I could have made for myself. Just again, I love having women on here because it's like, we'll say the exact same stuff and I'll, I'll, I'll show you from the male point of view. And I get this a lot of the time, you know, women will say, I'm really surprised that it's exactly the same for men, but a lot of my audience. So a lot of the stuff I talk about is like building a sex life, you know, getting laid, losing virginity, all that kind of stuff. Maybe you'll be surprised. Maybe you won't, but a lot of guys struggle with coming out about that stuff too. There's like the general notion that like, no, guys all want to have sex. And it's like, they want to, but they're not okay with admitting it. And there is a process. I have to show them that it's okay to like, tell your friends and family that you want a girlfriend or that you want to have more sex or that you don't have much sexual experience and you're trying to build that. They almost have to give themselves permission because they think I won't be respected if I say, you know, I don't have much sexual experience. I want to try and get some more. Like, oh, you're just a shallow guy. You're just using women. You know, that's stupid. You should be building a career. So there is this process of what you're talking about where you like have to like come out and like I had to do the same thing. And it sounds like, yeah. like you did. So yeah, because yeah. we're yeah. so, you know, as society, we are so conditioned to the fucking stigma and judgment that everyone has on sex, on yes. the sex industry, on strippers. on, And it's like, why dude like why it's so silly to me <laughs> this stuff triggers me like crazy i will I, I i go on this big like boomer rant and i'm like how come on youtube you can't have any sexual content you can't even hint at it but i can show someone getting stabbed and that's or shot or murdered that's perfectly fine but like there's this weird stigma around sex it's like it's, it's icky it's very like victorian like puritanical oh my god like yeah. but what if the kids see and it's like then first of all like you're not showing hardcore sex we're just talking about sex and even that's apparently not okay with with children within a 500 meter vicinity they, they might possibly hear the word sex and freak out and i don't know start having sex or something i, I don't know what people think will happen but violence is yeah. okay so yeah i think yeah and i'm that. like no totally and i totally agree with you because like people don't want to talk about sex people don't want to talk about money right they put these things on pedestals hush hush like let's not talk about it and when you're hush hush you're not supposed to talk about it people don't get the right knowledge and the, and understand you know about sex they don't understand things about sex which leads them to creating these limiting decisions for themselves that i'm not good enough to have sex i'm not good in bed or whatever with yeah. money i don't know how money works I, I can only make x amount of dollars and it's like when we remove it from the pedestal and we normalize the conversation and we just have open conversations, that is how you learn and how you can make better decisions for yourself as a grown adult. 
It's funny. I, I like that you use the word normalize because as soon as you do normalize, and I'm so glad you segued into money there for me. Thank you. Best segue ever. As soon as you normalize like sex and money, especially money, it starts coming to you. You, a lot of what you talk about is like, just don't be, I call it allergic to money. Like stop being allergic to money, but you talk about having a healthy relationship with money, like, like letting yourself receive money. It's like, just stop being allergic to it. As soon as you normalize, like, oh, I'm allowed to make money. Those limiting beliefs start fading away. Like, oh, I don't have yeah. to have this limited salary. I can earn more if I want to. I could start a, a side hustle. I could start my own business. I can charge whatever I want. As long as I'm giving value and people like it, why not? Mm -hmm. Yep. In the world of NLP, we mm -hmm. talk about moving towards what you want, not away from what you don't want. So you say, don't be allergic. But if you weren't being allergic, what would you be doing? You would be healing your relationship with money. So we all, in my world, we always want to focus on what we want not what we don't want. So that's why I'm always talking about like healing your relationship with money, bring more in, come more in. It's like those yep. little, yep. yeah. So I yeah. call that, I call that, I have a concept called winner's mindset versus loser's mindset. And yeah. I say, don't focus on the loser stuff. Like as in, don't say, oh, I don't want to lose. I don't want to fail. Start saying, I want to win. So exactly the same stuff you're talking about. Work towards what you're working towards. Don't worry about what you're not working towards and obviously there is benefit in saying like yeah i don't want to be poor fine say that but then what are you going to do instead i, I see the totally. same with addiction i'm sure you had the same thing with your addiction you don't just quit the addiction obviously you do that but then you need to replace it with something you need to be building something otherwise what are you just going to sit in your room all day for 12 hours a day not smoking weed or not looking at porn or not drinking it's like you have to do something instead to replace it you have to work towards something Totally, for sure. <laughs> one one vice to another. <laughs> yeah, staring at the wall is a vice in itself. Yeah, sure, yeah, zoning out, watching Netflix is a yeah, vice in yeah. itself. <laughs> I want to segue. I, I want to jump back to something that stood out to me that you said ages ago, like like ten minutes ago. When you first started, you wanted to make money, and you tried a bunch of different stuff, and a lot of it failed. I think there's this concept that people have where. Or, or I, I'm, I notice that people are very afraid of failure or they fail once and they think that that's, I'm phrasing this badly. They think one failure means they failed entirely. And it's like on, on the journey to whatever end you're getting to, whatever your goal is, you will fail hundreds of times. Like you've tried <laughs> to start a bunch of businesses. God knows I failed, failed for like two years, two and a half years to pay my bills with coaching. I just, I, I failed for two and a half years. I tried a bunch of different stuff. It didn't work. People think that, I'm sure you get this a lot. They'll look at you and say, wow, Paige is successful. She's crushing it. Everything's good. I, I can't be Paige. I'm not Paige. And it's like, do you know how many times Paige fucked up in order to get to where she is right now? <laughs> right? I, like, I'm not wrong in saying that. No, you're so right in saying that. And I know it's like, the thing is, is like, there's no, there is truly no failure. There's only feedback. And so yeah. you try, you have to at least put yourself out there and try and take risks. And yeah, things might not go the way that you want and we take it as a failure, but it's like, okay, feedback, that's how not to do that. Okay. Like let's move forward. But you know, it's like those memes. I'm sure you've seen that meme with like the iceberg, how it's like, has like the tip of the iceberg is mm -hmm. like, this is what you see. And then like all of this stuff underneath, it's like, yeah, yes, I'm very successful today. And do you know how long it took me to get there? <laughs> like years of but learning and trying and, and it was seemingly failing or receiving that feedback and keep on going and going and going and going and not making it mean shit about me. This is the hardest part of like what we do. Cause obviously like part of what we have to do is like as coaches, we want to say like, look, I'm here. And obviously we're not perfect. I'm, uh, you know, this is just a, a really bad explanation, but like I'm up here. I used to be down here. Now I got to this point. Yay. Like you, there is benefit in you showing, like kind of showing off, if you know what I mean. Like, like look at my cool life. You can do it too, because that's motivating to people. But then at the same time, you have to balance that with, and here's how much I used to not know what the hell I was doing. Here's how many times yeah. I failed miserably. But have you noticed that, I, I mean, I guess we just kind of answered this question, but people will ignore the like 500 articles or 50 podcasts you do about how many times you failed or how depressed you used to be or any of that. And they'll just say like, yeah, but right now you're this person. So that's the only thing I'm going to focus on. It's like, we like to look at others and focus. We look at their highlight reels. I call it where you're looking at like the best moments from their life. And then you look at the worst moments from your own life and say, well, I'm not as good as Paige. Cause you know, Paige is probably just always happy 24 seven. Everything is perfect. And I'm miserable 10 times a day. So therefore I'm not good enough. 
And you almost kind of forget that the person you're looking at is a person too, and that they have failures, they have bad moments, they, they're not always happy. Yeah, for sure. That's, and that's it's so powerful because it is easy when you're on, looking online and social media to put these people, these coaches or, you know, successful online entrepreneurs up on pedestals like, wow, you know, and that's why I always try and be so transparent in all of my content, all of my stuff. Like, look, like this is what my situation was. You know, I was like 50 grand in credit card debt. I had $200 to my name. I was addicted to Coke and Xanax and Adderall. And, you know, like I lay it out there, even though, you know, it was it's not anymore but like it was embarrassing at the time yeah. to just be open and vulnerable but i'm like this is me this is my story like whatever i always talk about like have you seen the movie eight mile with eminem i haven't seen it it's on my list of movies because i know it's pretty decent <laughs> Okay. Well, there's a, re okay. There's a, re you're not going to understand the reference then okay. that I say, but maybe your listeners that they're listening to this, then they've sure. watched M eight mile, but at the very end of eight mile, Eminem and this other guy, they're doing like this rap battle and Eminem mm. goes first. And you know, in rap battles, you're like, you know, riffing and like, you know, roasting the other dude da, 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 da. Mm. but at the end Eminem goes and he takes the mic and then he just lays everything out about himself. He's like, and then at the end, he's like, now you say something. And he won because he's just like, what are you going to, what are you going to hold against me? Like, I fucking own it all. I admit it all. Like, what more is there, yeah. you know? So there's like yeah. a level of humility and vulnerability in sharing your story that's so powerful for people following, but also for marketing too. <laughs> yeah, no, honestly. And, and maybe you did it for the same reason. I started out doing it because I, like you talk about marketing. I started out sharing that stuff because I was just like, I went through so much hell that there's no way in hell I want anyone else to go through this. Like I have to put it all out there and be like the lighthouse that says like, Hey, there's rocks here. Don't crash into this. Like here's where I fucked up. Please don't fuck up the same way. But it does, it does work like way better than any other. I can't imagine doing it any other way. And I've seen other coaches and I'm sure you have too, that just only talk about like their expertise or how high they are right now. They don't talk about like their low moments. It just doesn't come across as, like genuine they just don't seem like a person they seem almost like a i guess like a marketing pitch you know what i mean like it's not like you're listening to a human yeah and that's the thing too is about you know like energy right i talk about energy all the time i coach on it like everything is energy we're energy money is energy you know the instagram post the internet is ether which is energy and so it's like when you are energetically hiding something and you're trying to portray something that you're not people feel that and they receive that case in point when I wasn't talking about the fact that I was a stripper and I was hiding all this shit, it, I, the needle wasn't moving. But the moment I did that is when my business began to take off because there's that connection. There's that realness, that raw rawness. Yeah. I have one of my coaching clients. Um, he's working on making money as well. He's working on like content creation and stuff. And he's basically asked me quite a few times, uh, how do I have more of an audience or how do I have a more loyal audience? He says like, your guys just absolutely love you to be. It's like, they're really, my guys are absolutely amazing. How do I get that kind of audience? And I said like, dude, you have to start sharing it yourself. You have to talk about your low moments. You have to talk about your depression with your mother. You have to talk about this. You have to talk about your parents' divorce. You have to share the worst of yourself or the, your low moments so that there is that like, oh, look at this, like he's climbed. There's that story and you have to be like a real human because right now you're just a guy talking into a webcam. No one can really relate to you. You're not a person until you share those like really low moments. And so I, I, I do want to talk from your low moments to your high moments. Let's like tell that story now. So if you don't mind sharing, I asked you this before, so I'm not dumping you on this. Like you talked about being massively in credit card debt. I was too, by the way. Where are you now? Like, like, what's your best month now? If you're yeah. happy to share numbers, go crazy. My gosh. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. When I first started my online business, I was 50. I honestly, I think I was over $50,000 in credit card debt. Um, I was over 50 grand in credit card debt. Like, I think I had like eight different credit cards. They were literally all maxed out. I had $200 in my bank account. <laughs> and I was like, well, I'm going to figure this out. You know, that's giving me heart palpitations. Just thinking about that. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. And so it's like, and I didn't try and I was like dancing, but I didn't, I never trusted myself to like go into work. So that was an unreliable source of income, you know? So anyways, so I went from that and then I started my business and I wasn't making, I, in the first, 
like, I think eight months of my coaching business, I made like to in total $100 from a couple different, um, like little masterclass, $30 masterclass mm -hmm. sales or whatever. $30. And ah, then, that hurts. I used to charge so little too. That hurts so bad. For the little, <laughs> like, but now it's like a little tripwire uh, course. It's like, whatever okay. you just like throw yeah. it up there. Yeah. So I had made like a hundred bucks and then I came out of the stripper closet. And then within a year after coming out of the stripper closet, I made like 130 K in my coaching business. Um, and then, yeah. And then last year, like I did 250,000 last year nice. total in COVID, which was like, yeah, like the highest year that I had ever done. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna blow that out of the water this year. Um, but my highest cash month so far has been, uh, $44,000 cash, which is amazing. And I took two trips that month. I went to like Mexico for a uh -huh. week and I went to Sedona. So it would have been and even higher. Yeah. Um, and so then, and then like this month, like I'm at, I think I'm at like around like $30,000 this month, but I have been in like a 16 day intensive training. I was like, got pretty sick. Like, so it's just like pretty cool that I'm so provided for, even when I'm not quote, you know, in the beginning, it was like, I would be on my computer for like 12, 14 hours, like yeah. figuring it out, doing this, doing this, doing yep. this, doing this. And like now this week, like, I think like every day I've worked for maybe like two hours on my computer doing like, yep. you know, client calls or like podcasts or anything like that. So, yeah, yeah, I, I, I love that. And I'm going through that process myself. My best month so far has been this month, actually, which is 13,000 US. So not as glamorous yeah. as you, but like, like, seriously, that's, that's like way more than I ever thought would ever be humanly possible. And I have noticed, and I'm sure you're going to say the same, you keep having these like limiting beliefs, or at least these doubts along the way, you think like the next step up, like, can I earn $20,000 a month? You're like, maybe, and then you do it. And you're like, could I do 30,000? You have to like keep showing yourself that the next level is possible. And that really yeah. applies to every single goal that you have to work on money, sex, yeah. dating, love, whatever it is. It's like, all of this is possible. You just have to upgrade to the next level. Yeah. I love that you said that because this is something I talk about with money and with like manifesting money and with like growing your income is, you know, when we're at a certain level, like let's say you're in the beginning, right. And you're making, mm -hmm. you know, $5,000 a month and you see these coaches and they're making hundred thousand dollar cash months and million dollar years and all this kind yeah. of stuff. And you're like, I want to get there. And you know that you can get there mm -hmm. and you can, but to jump from $5,000 a month to $100,000 a month, could it happen? Sure, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. But is it realistic? Does your subconscious believe that that's realistic? So bringing it down to like jumping from five to seven, that's doable, right? Yep. So then you hit seven. Okay, now let's push for 10, right? So it's like climbing that ladder, you know? And like, even in my business, like I, when I made my first thousand dollars, I was like, fuck yeah. And then I was Me like, too. hey, we're going to do five and then from five to 10 and then from 10 to 20. And then it just kept, you know, like going and stuff. And it was never a matter of like, not believing that I could do it. I've always known, you know, and like my next goal is like 75 grand cash. And then my next goal is a hundred grand cash. And it's all available to me. It's just a matter of like at every level we get right. You're at 13 K. So you're going to hit 20 K next month. Yep. And that's going to be a whole new level of um, things to learn, different responsibilities, yep. maybe yep. different things are going to come up. So as we keep progressing, there are things to learn at each mm -hmm. level that we integrate. And then we go on to the next level. Which is why this stuff is so much fun because it's like a constant learning experience and a con it's like a constant adventure. And there's this book that I'm obsessed with that I talk about all the time. It's called The Slight Edge. And it's basically everything you're talking about here. It's just taking okay. those little baby steps and upgrading like to the next level, taking the next challenge. It even applies to stuff like dating. Let's say I have a client or a guy who's like, I really want a girlfriend. I'm a virgin. I, have, I just want a girlfriend, right? You have to kind of, like you're saying here, if you say to that guy, right, dude, you could go out right now and go to a cafe and talk to a girl and you could date her and, and like, that's possible. Or you could go to a bar and, and hit on a girl there, you could go on Tinder. But he doesn't believe that's possible yet because he's a virgin. From his point of view, he's like, it's not even possible. So you get him to do the base, the first thing, which is let's get you to, I don't know, talk to a couple of girls that you meet at an event or a, 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 a social circle or something or let's get you to start saying hello to women on the street or in the elevator or something you start with that baby step and then when he believes that you say okay let's get you to get a phone number he gets a girl's phone number and then you say let's get you to do a decent job on a date and he doesn't really believe that's possible but eventually he does it now he's okay at dates it's like you need to keep upgrading each level and like you say you can jump like that some people do jump but the easier way to do it is to just like 
take those little baby incremental steps. Cause again, people look at like where you are and they'll go like, I can't earn 45,000. Even in my head, I'm like, I can't earn 44,000, but it's like, but I don't have to, I just have to earn 15, which I can do. Cause I can do 13 and then I have to 100%. do the next step. Yeah. 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 It's like upgrading. And there's still a week left when we're recording this. So you're going to hit it. So don't even, that's it's true. already done. That's true. It's that's already true. done. <laughs> and I, no, that's a good mindset. That's a good mindset. A lot of the time, if you just tell yourself, no, I'm going to do this thing. Like it's going to happen. You, you go yeah. all in, you're more invested. You do everything you need to do to make it happen. You don't hold back. And so there's an opportunity and you go, I'm going to grab that opportunity. And I, I'm not going to take no for an answer. I'm not going to just quit at the first stumble. I'm going to do everything I can to make it happen. 100%. And, and with money, what is so, it's such this beautiful thing about, right? We know how much, you know, you want to make, you know, a set amount, right? And we, we put our offers out and we go and we work and we align with the energy of money and we do all the things. We learn all about money manifestation. We go for it, right? But then you detach, right? And you're like, it's fine. Like this is it. And I'm satisfied. What I have right now is perfect enough and detaching mm -hmm. from making it mean anything. Because if you hit $20,000 a month, that doesn't mean anything about you. If you hit $13,000 a month, it's, we put this meaning entrepreneurs and coaches and stuff. We put this meaning on, if I make 20 K a month, then it means I'm X, Y, and Z. Right. And we put that validation on the fucking number but the mm -hmm. thing is money's a flow you're gonna have good months you're gonna have slow months like you know i had forty four thousand dollars and then i had twenty one thousand and now i have 30 like it's like you know what i mean it's up and down and up and down but i don't attach my self-worth to how much money i'm bringing in you are really absolutely <laughs> you are absolutely speaking my language you have to be okay with where you are right now now that doesn't mean you're satisfied with where you are like you still want something more but you have to still be okay with the fact that you're here now you can't yep. live your life in this constant like, oh my God, I'm, I'm not good enough. I'm failing. Everything sucks. My life isn't happy. I did that for a long time, for a lot of my coaching, for a lot of the last like two or three years. It was like, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. This isn't good enough. And I noticed that as I was starting to get to benchmarks that before I said, when I get to that number, my life will be amazing. I will have made it. And then I'd get there and go like, no, not good enough. I still need to go higher. I, I did that like two or three times, like moving the goalposts, we call it, where you just keep redefining where you'll be happy. And at some point I was like, I need to be happy now, don't I? I had a big conversation with my girlfriend, Imogen. And I was like, I just keep finding reasons not to be happy, don't I? And she thought about it. She's like, crap, yeah, you are, you are. And I was like, okay, we just got to be okay with where we are now. Like we can more than, we have more than enough to pay the bills. Like we don't have to stress about money. I have to at least be okay with being here. And sure, strive for something more. But I, I really like that you're saying there has to be this balance between where I am okay is, is sorry, where I am now is okay. Or like, I'm okay. This is good enough, but I do want more. Sure. Yes, of course. Absolutely. We all want and more. more humans. <laughs> yep. 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 More will be coming, but you can't live your life in constant. Uh, it's almost like you don't like yourself. That, that's how it felt for me. It's like, I'm not good enough. Yeah. Like I'm a failure. That's how it was for me. I'm failing because I'm not at my goal yet. And it's like, well, I'm always just going to set more goals. So that means I'm always going to be a failure. That can't be right. That can't be a good recipe for, for a happy life. Right. Yeah. Cause it's like when you set those goals, right. Whatever a goal was like, you know, for your first 10 K month in your business or whatever. And then you hit that goal. How long do you sit there and celebrate and be like, God, I did it before. Like, oh, now what can, what can we go on to next? Right. The subconscious mind, there's 20 prime directives of the subconscious mind. And one of them is that it is continue. It is programmed to continuously seek more and more and more, which is beautiful, right? That's why us yep. as humans, like, Ooh, what more, what more? And we innovate and we go and we push yep. and we push, but on like an emotional sanity, like gratitude manifestation level, it's like, you have to stop and give yourself credit and acknowledgement for how far you've truly come. I love that. Do you know one thing that I make all of my coaching clients do? I do it myself. I've done it for the last three years. I do it with my girlfriend is once a week, I do what's called a, a weekly check-in. And so you have an accountability part. It needs to be with another person. You can't do it with yourself. And you ask them some questions and they ask you some questions. And one of the questions that you ask each other every week is, you know, what did I achieve this week? Like, like what goals did I hit? What can I basically, what can I give myself credit for? Or what can I be grateful for? And I also do it once a month and I do a big one every year. And I, I did it as a podcast last year. I, I will sit down, I will brainstorm, I'll write down everything on a big piece of paper that I achieved that year. And it's funny how you, 
before you do this exercise, you'll think like, oh, this year was okay. Like I could have done more, you know, I didn't work hard enough. You write it all down and you're like, holy crap, this was like the best year ever. Did I really do all this stuff? Like, but you don't, you're right. You don't give yourself enough credit unless you force yourself to. I, maybe that's just me, but I'm sure, you know, you're probably the same. You have to make yourself say, I did a good job because you are always looking for the next like goal. You're always looking ahead. Always looking for the next goal. I love that too. I do that too. I like do my monthly check-ins and my yearly nice. and stuff. And I'm like, God, did anything happen? I'm like, wait, I did <laughs> yeah. so much. Holy shit. Like I have done so much. And it's always like blows my mind. Yeah. I do this yeah. thing with my clients too, where I do like a celebration and I'll have mm -hmm. them like boxer or whatever. And I'll be like, I want you to box for me for three minutes. And you don't think three minutes is long, right? Until you're actually doing this. I want you to mm -hmm. tell me for three minutes, everything that you are celebrating and nice. send me a three minute voice note. Yeah, and so sometimes people are like, oh, three minutes, like that's easy. But then when you're in it, you're like, oh shit. Like, and you really get to just celebrate yourself for three minutes, everything, whatever it is that you want to celebrate. I love that. Um, I like that, I'm exercise. stealing that. I'm stealing that, do, that's really good. good. Yeah. I'm gonna quickly yeah. segue. I won't take up too much more of your time because we are getting towards the hour mark, but I, I do want to ask you some questions about stripping because I mentioned that you were coming on. I mentioned the money thing and people were like, yeah, that's interesting. And then I also said, and she's a stripper. And everyone was like, okay, I got a question. Can I, can you please ask this question? So <laughs> you don't have to answer <laughs> like, you don't have to answer massively long. Just like we'll, we'll, we'll rip through these. But okay. uh, crypto on my forums asked, what would you consider the ratio to be in terms of attractive men who visit clubs versus unattractive judged by oh. whatever your Goodness gracious. I don't know about a ratio, but I'll tell you this. There are all walks of life that come into the club, all walks of life. But when there's a fine looking gentleman, whoo, I get so nervous. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you still get gracious. nervous after all this time. It's like so much easier to dance just for like a fucking like whatever kind of dude, because you're just like, meh, you know, but then when it's like a hot dude, every single stripper I have ever talked to, we're all like, oh my God, I'm so nervous. <laughs> That's interesting because the perception is that like, oh, if you've been stripping for a long enough period of time, like, you know, you must just get used to it. But I, I get the same thing sometimes. I still get nervous with like coaching calls and stuff. And you'll tell the person and they'll be like, you're nervous. You've done this like how many times now? Yeah. Like people still get nervous. Like, yeah, totally. For sure. Yeah. All right. King Jeremy asks, is there a stripper culture? Like there is say an office culture. Uh, yeah, 100% there is a stripper culture. Absolutely. There's a stripper culture. There are certain stripper roles you don't break. There are different okay. um, different um, cultures in different um, clubs. Different clubs operate differently. Um, yeah. Yeah, I would have, uh, I, I've, I've, I had a friend who stripped, so, but yeah. So you already knew, yeah. Like, yeah. I'll give one example of that just really quick. And this is just one example. But like, so at some clubs, the culture, the, the stripper, we call it stripper etiquette, really, rather than like stripper culture. Um, yeah. But so like this, the first club I worked at, it was like, if a guy was up at the stage watching the dancer, like you do not approach him. That is the rudest thing that you can do. You don't approach a guy who's sitting at the stage. But at my club that I work at now, like my home club, it's not impolite to do that. Like you can approach anyone. But also, like, if a girl is sitting with a customer and it's your customer that, like, came in just to see you, like, you have to wait until that person, that dancer leaves the conversation before you can go up. Like, you don't go up and interrupt the conversation. It's like little, little yeah. things like that. Yeah. And to be honest, like, every job is like that. Like, every single right, job totally. has etiquette or rules. And you kind of figure it out, like, the longer you're there. And and I guess I'm sure you would say this, like, when you first start, your, your mission should be to kind of just sit back and watch what everyone else is doing and not like step on toes and, and be like humble, if you know what I mean. Like don't just charge in there. Yeah. A hundred percent. Stepping on toes, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Holden asks, where do you find boyfriends, uh, people to date? Do you ever date? I guess his question is, do you ever date anyone who's in the scene, like a manager, a bartender, or is it predominantly like outside the scene? And then a follow-up, answer, sorry, answer that question first and then I'll, I'll ask the follow-up question. Okay, so me personally, I have never dated a manager or a staff member, but I've known many of my colleagues to date the managers or the stuff staff. Like it's just like any other uh, job, yeah, people are like gonna date. Office. You know, it yeah. totally. It's just like that. Me personally, like I've never done that because I don't shit where I sleep. You know yeah, what I mean? Me too. Like, and it's yeah. like if something were to go bad, like I don't want. I there's a very firm there's very firm uh, boundaries, even though yeah. like definitely flirt a lot, but it's just like, I don't, I would, me personally, I'm not gonna cross that because I don't wanna ruin the environment for myself. 
yeah, it just makes it uncomfortable. Yeah. And then the next question is people you date, how do they react upon learning your profession? And then I guess I would ask my own question, which is like, when do you tell them? Right away. Right, yeah. right in front. It's yeah. all well, me personally, it's all over my Instagram. Yeah, they it's should like freaking it's, you know, know by the time they're on a date with yeah. you. Yeah. And the thing is, is it's like why I know some girls who like, you know, they have these, the shame and these feelings about it or whatever. And they, they want to wait till he gets to know you and then tell, and it's like, for me, it's like, this part of my life is part of my story. And if you don't like it, you are not the right person for me yeah. anyways. And we better just clear that out. Like right at the get go. Yeah. I do the same with my stuff. Like I mentioned, you know, I have a dating and sex podcast. Um, yeah. I just say that upfront. Cause like, why not? it's not really worth waiting until you know the third time you guys have had sex or something and then you dump it and they're like oh i don't really like that it's like yeah I if would a guy didn't like stripping yeah. <laughs> yeah i'd be like that's on you boo like you got some yeah. inner shit to do if you are insecure about like me dancing <laughs> yeah yeah and that's why you like you screen those people out like you say like straight away this is me do you like me Th that's how i feel d all dating should be anyway it's like you say who you are the other person says who they are and then you figure out like do we mix together or like, do we just not like each other? I've always totally. found it weird that people hold back. A lot of people hold back with like sharing that intimate stuff or that important stuff, I should say. Yeah, yeah. But it's just like any other job, if like you were a waitress, would you wait to tell someone you were a waitress? Would you wait to tell someone you're a doctor? You know what I mean? It's like, why, why, yeah. why do we have to, you know, that stigma about stripping is just like, man, oh man, and we gotta change that. Yeah, I mean, that, that stigma applies to a lot of things, but yeah, especially like if it's a sexual job. If you're in a sexual job, yeah, people just, and these questions, like, these are good questions, guys, by the way, but like, questions like this will always come up where they're like, but is, is life as a stripper different? Like, like, are you, are you, do you have, just, do people have to put on a hazmat suit to deal with you? Like, is your, is your, you know what I mean? It's like, they, they think that you're some, you get what I'm trying to say. It's like, you're some alien creature that has to, like, that has a radically different life. And it's like, no, it's like, everything's pretty much the same. Like, why would anything be different? Like. 100 percent. i'm a yeah. normal human being i get yeah. up go to the gym do my thing yeah. <laughs> we are normal people <laughs> yeah i've had like an escort on here as well and i've interviewed her and the questions were the same they were like do you ever fall in love and it's like well yeah like, of course i do <laughs> yeah yeah but these are good questions i hope that doesn't sound like i'm patronizing these kind of questions but yeah oh no no i think they're yeah. great questions too if someone wants to hit you up for coaching yeah. where can they find that and i'll leave links in the description below to your stuff yeah, absolutely. So you can go to my Instagram at the dot page dot Cole, and you can send me a DM there. Um, or you can also go to my website, check it out. It's pagecole.com. Cool. And I'm going to, I guess I'll say on that note, like I would highly recommend pages, um, coaching just because like that one free podcast that you did blew my fucking mind. You're responsible for me, like doubling my prices immediately. So I can obviously vouch for her. Do you coach guys? <laughs> Cause most of my audience are men. Like, would you work with me? I, okay. So that's a great question. I signed my very first guy client a mm -hmm. couple months ago. Um, and we just timing wise and stuff, we haven't been able to um, begin the coaching container because of some things or whatever, but you know, I've been coaching guys for 13 years in the club. It just looks a little different. <laughs> yeah. There is but a I huge mentor. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a huge mentorship aspect to stripping and escorts as well. Like there's a lot of like counseling and coaching and, and like, talking through i guess mental issues stuff like that even just oh like gosh, helping yeah. the guy be happy 100 percent. like we are therapists in there yeah. like guys come yeah. in you know who you know virgins like you've been mentioning and they'll ask you know like oh they're like embarrassed or they ask questions or like guys will be like want to talk about like this issue they have with this girl and they don't they want a girl's opinion like a pretty yeah. girl's opinion and yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah. I think there are some uh, professions where you just deal with the public a lot. And like, you are kind of a counselor, like bartender is one, because I, I had a friend who worked as a bartender. Even barber is one, like guys just yeah. will just- Oh yeah, hairdressers? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. Yes, for women. Absolutely. Yeah. You come to the hairdresser and you just unload and they make you feel better. Yeah, for sure. Uh, for people who haven't seen, I'm going to put you on the spot here. For people who haven't seen your content, maybe it could be an Instagram post or a podcast episode. Like what two pieces of content would you recommend someone go to if they've never seen any of your stuff? I'm putting you mm. on the spot here. So take your time. Mm. Well, 
you can just go to my Instagram and see any of those fire posts. Got, got a lot of ass shots on there. If you like big, thick booties, go on ahead over there. <laughs> That's cheating. Now everyone's going to click there, which is, I know is the point, but. <laughs> my booty is the clickbait, baby. And they see that. Yes, let me click that. Um... See, I don't get something like that. I kind of just like. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> um but podcast episodes i mean i have so many podcast episodes on there like if you are into spirituality and manifestation one of my top downloaded episodes is um it's called the game stripping the rules the 12 laws of the universe and i go through mm -hmm. all 12 laws of the universe what they are and how they actually relate to stripping but i mean you can obviously relate it to any industry that you're in um that's yeah. one of my best ones i also have an episode called big dick energy if y'all want to listen to that it's really good <laughs> okay there you go that's everyone's going to click on that now yeah. Of course they are. <laughs> yeah. And is there anything else you want to shout out before we wrap up? Um, no, I had so much fun coming on here and I really appreciate you bringing me on. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. We'll leave it at that. See you guys.